Welcome everyone to another graphics tutorial in C Sharp and this is optimizing the performance and as you see I've got some lakes here and it's now not just splotchy everywhere um, I was gonna do a tutorial on it and I was working to do that and it just didn't work out um, I ran into an error when I was changing the code it just I couldn't figure out at the time so it kinda got um, botched I think that's the word. So um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just go through the code so you can get it running like this. Now it looks a little bit laggy like this, but that's because I'm recording with Fraps and for some reason it just like you know glitches a little bit when I do that. Uh, you might hear my computer fan going. Um, that's because yeah I don't know why, but Fraps for some reason doesn't like it. Okay. So um, I'm going to get back to the code here and go through what changed. So in the map square, I got rid of the X and Y coordinates and I replaced the bitmap texture with the INT texture. And I'll just scroll through here so you can see what, um, what I have here. Now um, I'm not going to explain this because I already have and it's just simplification. So the only thing I will explain is that this INT texture now references a texture in an array on the form 1.cs and uh, that's the give ID here gives the ID of the texture so we'll start from the top here creature of course is our creature gra graphic bitmap is a graphic that's being drawn to and then drawn to the screen the texture grass is our grass texture and the texture water is our water texture um, these are the texture sets um, it stores the thing for the ID which is used here so you return the ID which is the position in this array that the texture is. Graphics G is the screen graphics um, SCG which I think that's kind of backwards goes the background. Um, rectangle area if I'm correct that actually draws where the um, creature goes but I don't know if I'm using that still. I'm not using any of these right now. Here's our, our map array that stores the x and y values for each square. Um, timer t of course is the game timer. Collision timer we're not using right now. I gotta get collision working again with this new system. Um, but I do have in map square something for collision which is is wall which is that way we can set any square to be a, uh, a wall. Um, now going down these control whether the character moves up right left down depending on what you uh, press on the keyboard. Um, the collision not being used currently right now, collected number not being used. This is where you start out um, in viewing where on the map does your creature start out. And the reason it has like uh, 8,000 by 8,000 is because each um, square is 40 wide. And so if you divide this by 40, you get 200, which is the position in here. So 200, 200 is where you start out with the creature. Um, and then it's of course the size of the screen is how much you view. So texture sets. This is the thing that um, holds all the textures. I have a hundred places set in here and as you see um, after assigning all of these from the resources um, I then uh, put the, the texture in right here. See so position 0 is the grass, position 1 is the water. Okay background we do a new bitmap with the form width and form height. Area is uh, right here, which is basically the place where the creature is drawn, but I don't think I'm actually using area right currently. I'm not using any of these currently. Um, make rectangle. I think I might actually not be using that. I will find out really quick. Um, no, I'm not using it. So don't worry about that. Um, here's where I generate the map. So this MP thing is the the map square thing up here. Um, and then here's setting the graphics. Here's setting up the timers and starting them. Inside of here, it checks for uh, the mouse uh, or the keyboard input because down here. If the key is W, it makes it go up, A, left, etc. And here it, it 
when the key goes up, it turns it off. So on, off, and then, then it affects it inside of this um, here by moving the rectangle direction. And so what this does is we go to move rectangle, and if the direction is direction dot up, which is what was put in here, and then minus equals speed, etc. And the view x and y, which the view x and y are of course these up here. All right. Um, next piece. This is no longer being used, and then the background image is being is using draw map with the view x and y, which we just referenced, and with the 40, like I said, for the um, the the rectangles and of course point empty is the point zero zero where it starts at the top corner of the screen to draw so let's go down to the draw image function um, let's see draw uh, I meant draw map actually okay so this is a little bit more complicated and you probably just have to play around with it to understand exactly how it works but basically it calculates for half the width half the height um, creates a new view x and y that is not these view x and y's that are like the 8,000 and 8,000 which are put in here and here but generates a x and y which is the actual squares that are being viewed not the point on the screen or whatever well actually it's well it's it's the squares in the array I should say and and the other view is exact positioning in that array um, not necessarily the point on the screen. Uh, these extra y and extra x, the use in that, in fact, I will remove them really quickly here to show you, is to give it a smooth uh, movement. So we'll move it up, and you'll see if you do it this way, it moves blockily along, one block at a time. Um, the x, so I'll put those back. The they are um, to move it smoothly before transitioning to loading the next square so that you, it actually loads one extra square and then and then uh, scrolls it over until it has to load the next square so that um, it appears smooth so if we go up here let's see what we're on, we're on here okay the subtract is actually used to calculate where the view begins and this right here is actually equal to that right there. So I really could, and I probably should, is just copy this and replace it like that. There you go. Now I placed subtract x and y in here instead of the other ones, which I should have done earlier, but wasn't thinking about it. And then we can go ahead and actually test that, make sure that that works correctly. And it does. All right. And then here, See the texture sets? This is the array that has all the textures in it. And then this, of course, is the map piece. I and N, which is, of course, X and Y, dot give ID, which is the texture ID, and then draws inside this rectangle, which is set here. And then we draw the image to the background, the creature image, right here. Okay, we are no longer using this draw method, so we'll just continue on. And we'll go right back up to where we generate it, and that's the last thing I have to show you. So basically, starting out, it creates this um, a new map square array, multi-dimensional array, with the width and height, and then it creates a random, so it can randomly generate the lakes. It makes rectangle for the lakes and puts 3,000 of them on a map that's a thousand squares by a thousand squares. And um, inside here, it cycles through them creating a new rectangle that's somewhere inside of the width and this this width is referenced up here so that the actual thousand squares and for each one of these is one represented by one square so the rectangle is just sort of virtual in that sense um, it's not the actual array that's affecting it's just its own thing that will be the values will be pulled out of this rectangle in order to uh, assign it and then they can be anywhere from three to seven blocks wide and three to seven blocks in height. Now in the next part it simply assigns um, 
the width, this for the width and the height, and makes them all zero, which is grass, of course. But then it goes later through the lakes, um, and checks, and starting at that specific lake in, and the lakes actually here is this array, right here. So then it goes through each position of that array, finds where its x and y are, and assigns for that entire area them to be water. And then of course returns the map down at the bottom. So basically first it assigns it all grass and then it paints the water in uh, after of course generating where the water should be. So um, I'm sorry this isn't like a regular tutorial but this is pretty complicated stuff and when I run into an error it's like um, video dies and I sit there for like half an hour trying to figure it out. So I'm uploading this instead. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I'll one last time go and scroll through all the code here. Just a second. Starting from the top, slowly down, so you can kind of pause the video and get the code from here. So while I'm doing that, I'll just say, please uh, like, you know, favorite, or just rate, up or down, doesn't matter, like or dislike. And then just tell me what you want to see next. And of course this isn't fully done yet, but I still do other simple tutorials on the side. And yeah, just subscribe if you like what you see. And and feel free to talk to me. I help people out personally too through Skype if someone needs help. As long as it's not a waste of my time. Alright, and that's it for now. And I'll see everyone later, of course. Do this too. Alright. Bye, everybody.